Welcome to our Church of the Mission online service. We are down a team member, so this service has been pre-recorded, and we will not be doing a live service as we have been streaming in the last couple months. Nevertheless, the pastoral team will be chatting with you live on our YouTube chat, and we will be available to you for live prayer after the service as well. Remember to type in your prayer request in the chat so we can pray for them during community prayer. And please note that Pastor Matthew is off for a week. Let's pray for him to have a peaceful and restful time off. And we hope that today you are blessed by the service, by the worship, by the word of God. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit will work through you and in you uh, to wash you with the word and to empower us to live it out for Jesus. Let's get to worshiping. Good afternoon, friends. It's always good to gather with you, either if it's in person or online. Obviously, we miss you a lot. Just a reminder, if you want prayer, feel, feel free to write it in the chat or join us in the prayer room. That will be shortly after the announcements. Psalm 62 verses 5 to 6 says this. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. You know, Easter reminds us of this, that God has the final word. Evil doesn't. Evil may bring us down in a fight. It may discourage us. But the battle belongs to the Lord. God has already won the battle. The next two songs remind us of this. Beautiful One and Chain Breaker. That we can take rest in God who is our rock and our salvation. So take the moment to sing it or listen to the words. Allow the presence of the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. And maybe write down a word or a phrase in the chat that, that God is bringing to mind to you. So join, join us together as we sing these two songs. Beautiful One and Chain Breaker. My soul, my soul must sing, my soul, my soul must sing, my soul, my soul must sing, beautiful.
You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. And if you're trying to feel the same old toys inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. You've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. sins and sinful desires are holding us down and we're not experiencing peace turn to Jesus only he can free us of the bondage that sin weighs us down turn to him in prayer now and if you'd like us to pray for you type it in the chat room but as well join us in our chat in our prayer room after announcements and and a pastor or an elder will be glad to pray with you so on that note Pastor Jan is going to lead us in a time of community prayer. Good afternoon. We are just going to bow our heads and do our community prayer. Gracious God, there's so much going on in this world. Lord, especially with this pandemic, we pray you take control and reigns, O Lord. Um, we grieve over the many who have died, the many that have been ill. And Lord, we just pray that you are working things out, Lord, that things can be safe again for people. So many people are suffering in ways that uh, we can't even comprehend. There's people that don't have food to eat, Lord. There's health cares that health care systems that are overrun and um, uh, they're traumatized and burdened and essential workers, Lord, that are just working so hard, Lord, and they're at risk of uh, becoming infected. Lord, there are many uh, poor countries in the world that are just suffering terribly. Lord, there are people that are struggling with uh, mental health and loneliness and depression 
because they can't be around other people. There are just so many issues, people that need surgeries and can't get them because of the overcrowded uh, health care systems. Lord, we just give it all unto you, O oh Lord. It's beyond us and it's out of control and only you can bring it back to a safe and normal place. So we give that unto you, Lord. We pray for the many in our communities, Lord, that are ill, that are lonely, sick, Lord, that are struggling in ways of that may be financial or physical or emotional, spiritually. We give that unto you, Lord, for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Lord, comfort them. We pray for our homeless, Lord, that uh, sanctions will be made for safe housing, affordable housing for all. Lord, we pray for our politicians making decisions that you will grant them wisdom. We pray for those that are in prison, Lord, that this will be the time that they will call out to you, Lord, and confess Jesus as Lord. And Lord, we just pray for uh, safety in our neighborhoods. There is so much violence these days. Lord, we pray too for the issue of racism. Lord, open up the hearts of people. Lord, take away the hate that they have, the fears that they have, O oh Lord, that we can be one in you. And Lord, um, we continually pray for Young Street Mission. Thank you for what you provide, Lord, that it can be given to the community. We continually pray for especially food donations at this time. We pray, you know, for our doors to be able to um, be open to the public soon, Lord. Um, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, people can't come inside and it's been a really difficult journey. But thank you, Lord, that we have been able to provide food and at least be outside with people. And Lord, we continually pray for the mission for, for the staff and that we continually are known as um, your people and that we are people of love and peace. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for Church at the Mission that we can at least meet online. And um, yeah. Oh God, you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. We are so grateful that we have you in our lives. And we just pray for the rest of the service that it may be a blessing to many and that your word goes forth. And we pray this in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, 17 and 18. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God has given him. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forevermore. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Hey everyone, it's James. I am so happy and so excited that I can be here with you today. I want to say that I love you and that I miss you and that it has been far too long since I have seen all of your wonderful faces, but I am so thankful for technology, that technology can bring us together um, and technology can just allow us to connect with one another. I do hope that everyone had an incredible Easter holiday. I know it's incredibly different with the pandemic in terms of what we can and can't do and who we can and can't see, but I do hope that using technology or whatever other means that you were able to connect with your loved ones in a way that means something special to you. Easter is an incredibly special time for 
Christians all over. And as we think about that, really, it's thinking about the Passover, and it's really thinking about the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus and what it means in our lives. And it's always an amazing season as we come through Lent and we come through reflecting on that once again, going into Good Friday, talking about the death, about the greatest death that was ever died so that we could be set free and transformed and what it means for our lives as Christians. And today when I was thinking about what God wanted me to speak on and what God wanted me to share about, I wanted to talk about grace, I wanted to talk about sin, and I wanted to talk about godliness. So when, I, when we read this passage, it comes in the book of 2 Peter. And in 2 Peter, we find ourselves as the recipients of a letter that was written to the church to prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. And it's a letter that was written to, with an effort to make them grow in grace and godliness and to reflect the image of Christ in all that they say and do. And it serves to remind the church that the Lord has made many different promises and that he will keep them if the believers are living their lives in accordance with the word of God. And so when I was thinking about that today, what I wanna focus on is a real practical message about what walking with the Lord looks like. I wanna talk, like I said, about grace and about sin and how we learn to partner with the Holy Spirit to better reflect Jesus in our lives. So when we talk about grace, it's important to understand what grace is and what grace isn't. And we're gonna go through a little bit later and we're gonna talk about what grace is, but I wanna start off and clarify that in, that um, embracing grace is not embracing lawlessness. And grace, God's grace is not a license to sin. Yes, God is love and forgiveness. God is so incredibly gracious and merciful, but there's a standard that he's calling us to in our lives. And like I said, grace is not a license to sin. And the fruit of salvation, salvation is, you know, when we've given our lives over to God, it's a changed life that reflects the image of Christ in all that we say and do. I remember when I was first saved, there were things in my life that I didn't know that God was calling me to live a different way. And I things that I didn't understand about the ways that a Christian should conduct themselves. And as I grew in my walk with God, I went through a process where God would show me things about my character that he wanted me to work on. And it was tough sometimes. And it was a real process at times, but yet I had to submit to the Word of God, and I had to read the Word of God, and I had to partner with the Holy Spirit in order to change the way that I lived and thought. And one of the things that we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit, who is a person of the Godhead, which is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, is the person who convicts us of righteousness. Now, I want to take a moment and just jump into another passage, and I want to jump into a passage where Jesus promises in the book of John to send the Holy Spirit. So, let's read together. So, John 14, starting at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate and be with you forever the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because I live. You will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas said, 
But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all of these things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This passage was when Jesus was talking about how he was going to leave the earth and God was going to send the Holy Spirit into the earth so that it could be God with us forever in the person of the Holy Spirit. So when we think about that and we go back to grace and we go back to what we're talking about, I want to ask a question. Have you ever told a lie and felt bad about it? Have you ever lost your temper and immediately regretted what came out of your mouth? In the same way, the Holy Spirit will challenge us. The Holy Spirit will convict us of sin if we allow him. And when we're true, when we ask God to transform and change our lives. And part of the maturity of being a Christian and growing in God's grace is being sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he does speak and being quick to obey what he tells us. Sometimes it could be things like making an amends for something that we've said or done. We have that sort of sense of right and wrong. Or maybe God's calling us to lay something down that we've been struggling with and it's destroying our lives, but God wants us to let it go and he wants to set us free. Whatever it is, God knows and he is not standing there wanting to judge and condemn us, but he wants us to change the way that we live and act and he is willing to walk with us as long as it takes so that we can develop that relationship with him in the process. You see, we're living in such a very unusual time right now. And many people feel a lot of different ways about it. But God wants us to remain steadfast. And he wants us to remain steadfast in his word, and he wants us to remain steadfast in the truth, and he wants us to continue to obey him in the best of our abilities. We can't be shaken by the times that we live in. And you might be sitting here and you might be saying, well, what does God expect of me? How does God want me to live? And I want to encourage you to jump into the word of God and make it a daily practice, even if it's only for a few minutes. Not only is it good to help you grow in your Christian walk, but you'll also see what God expects, and the Holy Spirit will continue to mature you and speak to you through the Word of God. We cannot fear change. Just because we're living in such a crazy time doesn't mean that God expects any less of us. If anything, in this day and age, he's calling us into a deeper walk with him. And much like the early church, he's saying to us, get ready because you never know the day of the Lord's return. And when he returns, he wants us to be found mature. He wants us to be found without spot and without blemish. You see, God knows what we need and we have to trust that. We have to trust that he's the potter and we're the clay and he's transforming us in ways that he sees fit so that we best reflect Jesus. Now, I want to share with you something really cool. When I was in Bible college, I heard a very amazing analogy that I will never forget. I was watching my dean speak, and she got up, and she had in her hands two squeezy bottles. And one had a stinky fragrance, and the other had a sweet-smelling perfume. For the sake of this object lesson, I'm going to use a really, really, really stinky hand sanitizer. And I am going to use a really nice perfume. So let's just take a smell of both. Ugh. The sanitizer is gross. The perfume is lovely. The analogy of the example is that when the pressure is on, 
And when times are tough and testing and you feel like you're being squeezed, what is the fragrance that is emanating from you? Because you see, we will all emit a fragrance, but which one do you want to be in the times when the world needs a light? Do you want to stink or do you want to smell pleasant and lovely? You see, God gives us grace and grace and mercy are the ability to do what we cannot do in our own strength. The power of God's grace is that he loves us and that he's willing to journey with us as long as it takes and to teach us like children how to walk and talk and how to conduct ourselves. But we need to learn to embrace God's grace because the Bible is calling us into a place of maturity. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, or we could say woman as well, I put away childish things. And grace is the ability to grow. And grace is the ability for us to grow beyond what we could ever think of ourselves. And, and grace is the ability to grow mentally, to grow spiritually, and to grow emotionally. And as we venture back into our scripture, and we continue to talk about grace, we see that in this passage, God is calling us into a place of growth. Verse 17, therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawlessness and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You see, it's time to grow. When the season is tough, when the season is rough, when everything around us is causing us to, you know, lose the sense of who we are and what's going on, like in this crazy time that we're living in, it is the perfect opportunity to grow. You see, we're in such a time and a season where if we allow everything of this day and age, if we allow the spirit of the age to get to us, we could be a mess. We could be shaken, we could be depressed, and you may be depressed, you may be going through things. But in this season, God is still saying, come here with me and I am doing a work in you and I am calling you to grow and to come alive in this season. And so I wanna continue with you. Let's go on a journey together here and grow in this day and age. What are some of the things that we can do to grow? Amidst all of the craziness and everything that's going on, let's not let God take the back burner in our heart, but let's continue to pursue intimacy with him. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray and pray and pray. Pray, speak to God. Do you need something? He hears your prayers and he will answer your prayers as long as you continue to walk and talk with him. Repent quickly. We all have things in our lives and sometimes we all mess up and we all fail. But if you repent quickly, what does the word say? That God is able and God will forgive us and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Spend time worshiping and spend time with God. That is the most crucial thing, even if it's only for a few minutes every day. We're blessed in the sense that now we have a lot more time on our hands. And if we use the time that's on our hands to pursue a deeper intimacy with God through worship, and through reading the word and through praying, we're going to continue 
to grow in grace and godliness and to be transformed by his spirit into the image of Christ that God wants us to be. Put on some music. Put yourself in your room. Just worship God right there in your room. Just worship God. Just pray. Just speak to him. And just begin to deepen that connection with him in this season. Because yes, the times are crazy. Yes, we've just gone into another lockdown. But what does it say? Be on guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawlessness and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So may we always strive to grow in God's grace, and may we, as the body of Christ, strive to grow deeper in our walks with God and to grow in the ability to hear his spirit when he speaks and when he leads us. Let's not forget. Let's not back burner our walk with God, but we, may we embrace the grace of God and, and embrace the word of God that we can be changed more and more into the image of Jesus in all that we say and do. Let's pray. God, I just thank you. I thank you for this opportunity that we have today to come before you. And Father, even in this moment, Lord, Father, I'm just praying that we would just begin to take a look at our own lives and take a look at our own hearts and take a look at our, our, our own situations and everything that's going on. And Father, in this moment, Lord, we just surrender. Father, we surrender our cares. We surrender our burdens. We surrender our worries to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that you have promised us peace, not as the world gives, but peace that you give, that we are not alone and that you are always with us. Father, I pray that in the days to come that we would embrace your grace, that we would embrace your teachings, and that we would do what you have called us to do. Open our eyes, open our ears, cause us to see and hear what you are saying to our hearts and help us to apply the word of God to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you and I miss you and I look forward to seeing each and every single one of you when you're able to meet again in person. Bye for now. Thank you for the beautiful message, James. It's be wonderful to have you back. Thank you for inspiring us just to follow after God's ways. Let's continue our worship with this song, Stronger, because we believe that it's in Jesus' sacrificial act on the cross to die for our sins and conquering death. He shows that He is stronger, that He is able to save us from the power that sin has over us. Let's turn to him through this song as a prayer saying, I want you, Jesus, because you are stronger. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame.
I pray that the message that was spoke today, it challenged you in some personal and powerful way to help you turn to God, turn to God's faithfulness. Let's end our time together with this benediction from Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. This is what the Word of God says. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Now, William is going to share some announcements for us. So, blessings to you, my friends. Well, was that not another great service? And what a blessing and a great gift to have James sharing his message today. It is now time for announcements. You can find Church at the Mission online events at the Linktree Church at the Mission. Pastor Matthew will be taking some time off until April 18th. If you have any urgent concerns, please contact Cadam at ysm.ca. The Trauma and Transformation course is back. It will be an eight-week course starting April 27th from 1 till 3 p.m. For more information, contact Pastor Matthew. Cornerstone Family Services is pleased to announce the launch of our Women to Women Peer Support. This is an opportunity for women to have a safe place once per month to share, learn, and grow together. For more information, contact Destiny at 416-929-9614 at extension 3298. The network course is now to be run as an on-demand course. You will be able to watch the videos and do the homework on your own time. Listen for more news in the upcoming weeks. Tithes and offerings are an important part of our worship. You can give online using our Linktree portal or you can drop it off at 306 Drive Street East at the receptionist. Just make sure to tell the staff that it is your church offering. After the service, we will have an online prayer room that you can call using Google Meets or through a phone number. Church staff will be ready to pray for you. You will find the Google Meets link or the phone number at our Church at the Mission Linktree portal. Fireside Bible Chat. Join us for our online Bible studies on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. You can find the link for the study on our Church at the Mission Linktree portal. Want to develop your public speaking skills? Join our Toastmasters Club every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. online. You can find the link at our Church at the Mission Linktree portal. Are you struggling with addictions or life struggles? Come join our online recovery group, which is held every Monday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. You can find the link at the Bridges Linktree portal. Computer classes. Have any questions about the internet or emailing? Join us for our online computer classes for adults, which is held Tuesdays from 10.30 to 11.45 a.m. To get the link to join, contact Julian at 416-929-9614. YSM now has counseling for use 13 to 18 through phone or video. Call Grace to contact with your youth counselor. We also have counseling for adults. Whether you're just looking to talk to a counselor once when you're experiencing a crisis or if you want to have several sessions to work on a particular issue like stress, memory, or a relationship conflict. The food bank is by appointment every other week. You must have an appointment when picking up your groceries. Please remember to bring your client ID number. Call receptionist to make an appointment. Warm takeaway dinners are every Tuesday and Thursdays at 270 Drive Street East at 4 p.m. That is it for announcements. It is now time for the chat and prayer room, which is now open. Bye for now. 
We've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. And if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. And if you're trying to feel the same old toes inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel Search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. Testify, testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify, testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify If you got changed